is Jim Shorkey, and today on Share the Knowledge, we've got Alex Hernandez from Equity Prime Mortgage. Alex, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Appreciate that. Alex, is if you could just kind of tell us about yourself, who you sure. are, where you're from, how did yeah. you get here? Okay. Uh, well, my name is Alex Hernandez with Equity Prime Mortgage, and I've been in the mortgage industry, I believe, since 2002. Okay. Uh, I uh, started as an originator, and you know I've done a lot of roles, uh, team leader, branch manager, got into banking a little bit as well. I was a manager for a bank for, I don't know, five or six years, but always in the financial service. Okay, yeah, excellent. So I've been doing it for a while. Per perfect, that's what we want. <laughs> we expertise. So, Alex, one of the things I wanted to ask you today, uh, I want to talk to you about credit reports. Sure. So that's like a big thing when somebody's going to look for a mortgage to get a house. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of tell us about what what is a credit score and, and what impacts it, positive and negative? Sure. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest concerns of borrowers is, uh, oh, what, is my credit good enough to get a mortgage and mm -hmm. do I have the right credit scores? And a lot of people don't even know exactly how that works. Um, there are three uh, major credit report agencies. It's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Okay. And those are the three agencies that uh, basically uh, companies will report your uh, payment history and other uh, histories to the agencies and they will create a score. Okay. They create an algorithm and they say, okay, this is what the score looks like. For mortgages, um, we pull all three of them. It's called a tri-merge credit report. Okay. And typically we will look at the middle score of the three to determine your credit score uh, for a mortgage. However, that is not the only thing that we look at when determining if you're eligible for a loan. Okay. So there's a lot of things that we take in consideration other than the score. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some things that would impact somebody's score? Sure. I mean, there's good good activities and bad activities, as we know. Uh, missing a payment, of course, can affect your credit scores. I think everybody knows that. And uh, and paying your bills on time is going to be a positive thing. But I think a lot of people uh, don't know that there are high balances on your credit cards and on other revolving accounts can can hurt you. Because it shows that you might be overwhelmed on your on your payments, and we want to show um, that you have a lot of availability of credit okay. and low balances. Typically, around twenty five percent, twenty to twenty five percent, is where you want to keep your balances of your credit cards and revolving debt. Okay, um, so that's that, kind of the sweet spot. Is that twenty five percent? Absolutely. And if you're looking to buy a house, um, the more debt, the more monthly payments you have, of course, that eats into your housing capacity of buying a house, right? So if you if you have a $500 car payment, mm -hmm. well, we have to take that in consideration when you're purchasing a home versus if you didn't have it, then we have $500 extra dollars to buy it to, to get that house. Okay. So that's that's important that you keep your balances low, mm -hmm. as low as you can, of course. Okay. And uh, I think that's that it helps. The other thing I want to mention is that there are other uh, derogatory type of credits that can hurt you, like foreclosures and bankruptcies. Okay. And... Um, uh, rep repossessions okay. and those are things that are major derogatories but they have a waiting period there's um, you know on a bankruptcy it could be three years before uh, three after discharge that you can go ahead and apply again and be eligible for a loan and uh, some of them as low as two years it depends on the program that you qualify so mm -hmm. it's important that when we look at it we can determine uh, if your waiting period has expired and we can go ahead and, and get you qualified. Okay, and so that would be something that if somebody was to call you looking for a mortgage that yeah. you would discuss that with? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Some t I, I can't tell you how many times I talk to borrowers and they're like, I had a bankruptcy and I don't think I qualify. And I ask them, well, when was your bankruptcy? Well, it was 2007. So that's almost 11 years ago and we're not taking that in consideration anymore. Okay, well, that's good information. Yeah, absolutely. That's good information. What, uh, as far as for the general public, what, what type of um, tools and resources are there for them yeah. to monitor you know, their, their, their yeah. credit score or improve their credit score? Just, you know, can you talk about some of those things? Yeah, there's a lot of great tools out there to help you monitor your credit. I think it's important. There's a lot of identity theft going yeah, on, absolutely. and there's a lot of mistakes that occur. People, these companies are reporting to the credit report agencies and that's necessarily not accurate. 
Um, the best website that you can go to is www.annualcreditreport.com. That is the, the, all three agencies are required by law mm -hmm. to provide you with one free credit report a year. Okay. Now this website will give you all of the history, everything that's reporting on all three agencies, but it will not give you a score. Well, we don't need a score. We want you to just monitor, hey, did they, did they uh, report my car payment as it's supposed to be? Okay. Or is there something there that is in mind that could negatively affect my credit ratings? Okay. So annual credit report is great. Now there's customers or borrowers who are having a hard time getting a mortgage because they don't meet the minimum requirements of a score mm -hmm. to qualify for a mortgage. Well, when we pull their credit, we have um, a few tools that will allow us to see your potential score. So let's say you need a 620 score to qualify mm -hmm. and you have a 610. Okay. Well, when I pull credit, it will say, okay, he has a 610 score, but he has the potential to increase the score 20 points. And these are the activities that he, need, he or she needs to do oh. to get that done. So it might say, pay down your Capital One card to $500. And so the borrower, I will, I will provide that report to the customer. They will go ahead and do what they need to do on that report, bring me back the evidence that they did it, like a statement, mm -hmm. and we do some. We send it to our credit report agencies, and they do something called a rapid rescore. Okay. A rapid rescore will go ahead and repull without affecting it as an inquiry. Okay. It will repull and it will increase your score to where we need it to be. It's an excellent tool that we have, and we provide it free to our customers. That's really good. So if somebody calls up, regardless of what their credit score is you can kind of provide them with a roadmap to say, hey, we can get you even better. Absolutely, and sometimes it's a case where they do qualify, but they want a better rate. Right. Or they want to put less money down. Okay. This, 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 um, these tools will allow us to do that. One, one other tool we have is called a what if simulator. Okay. So it shows me all the trade lines and it'll say, what if I pay this credit card off? Or what if I close this other account off? Mm -hmm. And it will say, hey, if you did that, this is what your score is going to look like. And sometimes, you know, it could go up, sometimes it could go down. Depending on what you do. Exactly. So that's another great tool for us to, uh, to be able to, to play with it and determine what, how we can get their credit to where it needs to be so they can get the best loan possible. That's excellent. Yeah. That's a really good tool. Yeah, it is.